All right, so the only announcement I have is for your programming test one, uh, the grading is definitely on a good track. So I will, as I said on uh, Monday, I'll give the result and feedback back to you either by the end of tomorrow or early Friday. So you'll definitely get the feedback before the drop deadline. And then for your upcoming written test number two, I already uh, confirmed the coverage. So whatever we covered today is not going to be there on the written test next Monday, okay? But you can definitely take a look at the guide, right? So nothing should be surprising, but make sure the PPY logging and the EZS logging work for you. It wouldn't hurt to really verify that again. You don't want to waste any time fixing them uh, during the test. Uh, check the coverage. It's said very clearly over there, please, okay? All right, so that's about uh, the administrative issue. For today, we're going to introduce to you the idea of a binary tree. And today will be a little bit heavier on the math side because we have to study about the properties of binary tree. So log, exponential, you know, things like that, we have to talk about it. But it's not too bad. Let's uh, see how much, how much we can do today. And so far we talk about general trees and the last stuff that we talked about on Monday was over here, right? Right, we talk about this, these two recursive methods, about depth and also about calculating the heights given some tree nodes. So I would suggest go over this heights method over here, which I gave you some hints about back on Monday, okay? So you want to make sure you know how to trace it, especially the recursion there involves a loop, which we did actually back in your assignment number one. For example, the group sum or the climb. Uh, methods, right? You want to make sure you're comfortable with this. This might come back again on programming test number two. These are very fundamental skills you want to grasp before you finish this course. All right, so that's about general tree, and hopefully you're okay. Otherwise, reach out to me. We can talk about your confusion. And for today, we can start you fresh about binary tree. For the first bits, I just want to give you some general idea, have some visual, and then we'll get down to mathematics, mathematical properties of binary tree. Let's take a look. So for binary tree, definition is fairly straightforward. Number one, binary tree is just a special case of general tree, special one. Number one, it is ordered, meaning that the children, uh, how the children is organized is going to matter the, for the order, from left to right, more specifically. But we'll see that very, very soon. So each node has at most two children, either zero child, one child, or two children, zero, one, or two. No more. That's why it's called binary tree. But we'll see visual. Each child node is labeled as either a left child or a right child. Left or right. It's not really like a general tree where you may have three or more uh, children. It's not the case anymore. But just give you a little bit of uh, clarification for your assignments and for your programming test number two. Most likely you're going to deal with general tree, not really binary tree. Binary tree will focus more on the theories and also algorithm in the, in the lecture, okay? And then a left child precedes a right child. Okay, so this is about the general structure for the binary tree. Let's have some visual together, okay? So we're going to talk about the definition for binary tree. It's a tree. Unavoidably, we can talk about it recursively. And we want to talk about different cases for uh, how much the size would be for the binary tree. And for the first two cases, I would suggest we simply copy from our discussion about general tree. That one we can simply reduce. Okay, for this part, you don't have to worry. So case number zero, case number one. It's only case number two that's going to make slight difference. But let's now just copy this part here, right? Okay, I wanted to do this explicitly so you know they share similar base cases. Okay, let me just paste that over here. Okay, you got case zero, and also you got case one. For case zero, you have empty tree. The root is simply pointing to null. Also for case number one, you have a binary tree that's singleton. That means only one node over there. And when you only got one node, typically you can say it's a left child, that's okay, but it's not so meaningful, but just, just one child, okay? And let's talk about case number two, which is important. Case number two, where you actually got two child. Let's say you got three or more. Oh, actually, let me say this. Okay, I beg your pardon, I said something slightly wrong. 
when you have a singleton tree, that means you only have the root, in which case you wouldn't say the root is either left child or right child. It doesn't make sense because the root doesn't have any parents by definition, okay? But now for case number two, you got more than two nodes. In that way, we can talk about a little bit more general. Right, so this is how you should think of it. Number one, we have the root. Think about this is the root of the tree, which has no parents, right? You can think about the parents over here is simply pointing to now. And then it has two, only two pointers, okay? And then each one of them may point to some nodes as well. Okay, let's clarify terminology first. This guy here on the left is called a left child. Relative to this node, of course. And this node over here is called a right child, obviously. And usually if you have to do any traversal, which I'm not too sure if we get to today, but if not, definitely next Wednesday. If you actually want to systematically visit every node in the tree, usually go for the left and then go for the right. Sometimes, maybe for whatever reason, you may want to go from the right to the left. That's okay too, but standard way is to go from left to the right. All right, let's talk about subtree. The subtree rooted at the left child is called the left subtree, okay? Left subtree, LST is the uh, standard acronym for that, okay? I'll just write it down here. Uh, sorry. Left subtree. All right, and then we got symmetrically another subtree over here rooted at the right child over here. That is called the right subtree, RST, okay? Right subtree. Okay, hey guys, are we okay so far? It's okay, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So hopefully so far it's still straightforward, yes. Right. Okay, so let me recap, which will also address your question. So we are saying that whenever you talk about a binary tree, there are three cases, basically. Case number one, the tree is empty. Case number two, there is only the root without any children, only one node. Case number three, you have at least the root plus one child, at least. In the general case, you have the root, and also you have the left child, you have the right child. And then you have to think about the subtree rooted at the left child. That itself can be described also recursively by using either case zero, case one, or case two. Right? It's kind of arbitrary. Right? So that's why for your methods to really work on the binary tree, you have to make sure you always think about, oh, what if I try to do something recursively on the left subtree? What's going to happen? It may be a very simple tree, just one node, or it could be a very big tree on the left. Right? So guys, that's something you have to remember. Okay, we'll dive a little bit more into some very common routines just to illustrate a little bit more about a left subtree and right subtree in the next page. All right, but if you're okay with this terminology, it's a good start. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about left subtree and right subtree. Okay, we got left subtree, right subtree, and over here. Okay, so that uh, slide is pretty simple, but I want to talk a little bit more about how you can think recursively when you want to calculate some stuff. And I'm going to use two examples. Let's say you're given this particular binary tree, okay? And then let's say I want to count how many of those there are in the tree. But I want to do it recursively. Task number one. Task number two, I want to know whether or not some item exists in this particular tree. Okay, so these two seem to be very different problems. But the way you're going to solve them recursively on this binary tree here is incredibly similar. So hopefully that will give you some initial inspiration about solving problems on the tree. Okay, let's do that. No Java code is needed, but I just want to give you the idea. Okay, so let's say this. For number one, counting the size. Okay, if I want, let me say star over here. Okay, star. If I want to count, if I want to define something recursively, I got to think about base case first, all right? 
What would be the base case? Typically, base case would be some external node or the root. In this case, would it be more suitable to think about the root as the base case? Or would it be more suitable to think about external nodes as the uh, base case? In this case, maybe the external node, because if you want to talk about the size of the root over here, it's going to consist of the entire tree. That's really the problem you want to solve. You don't want to make it a base case. On the other hand, if I want to calculate what's the size of the tree rooted at an external node, in that case, just one. I can count that right away. OK? Right, so here, you can think about, uh, let me say I have a method called size. Okay? Again, this is not exactly valid Java code. I'm just trying to sketch the idea to show to you. Idea is more important at this stage. I want to say the size of some external node. Okay, would just be by definition just one. For example, for this particular external nodes, the size should be just one. For this one here, also, it's just one. And how do you check if a node happened to be external? You want to make sure both the left and also the right, they are both null. Right? No references to the left and to the right, right? That's obvious. All right, that's the base case. What about recursive case? That's the important part. If I have the same method call, and then I have some internal nodes, meaning that the node has at least one child, left and right, right? Could be one of them is null, that's okay. Internal node. Now, what should that be? I'll give you guys some visual hints to start with. Let's say, uh, let me use a slightly different color here so you can see the comparison, okay? How about I use purple here? Think about, I want to calculate the size of this particular tree, let's say. That's what I want to do, okay? So example could be, I'm just given the node A. I want to know what is the size of the subtree rooted at A. In that case, how can we think about this problem recursively? What are the stuff I can solve right away? What are the stuff I can delegate to recursive call? That's the critical question. Guys, any idea? Just based on the diagram. Apparently, you don't just want to say, okay, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, that doesn't sound right. I can count A first as one. And then I would say recursively, I want to count how many nodes are there on my left subtree. And then recursively calculate how many nodes are there in my right subtree. Add them up together. If that sounds very new to you, that's okay, but you want to get used to this kind of recursive pattern. All right? I'll write it down over here. It's going to be one plus the size making a recursive call on, let's say internal node a, uh, n, n dot left child, I'll just say left, plus the size of n dot right. So what I'm doing here is, this thing here is counted as one. And then I'm also going to count the left subtree, the size of a dot left. And this part over here would be the size of A dot right. And each one of them at some point is going to return some value back to me. Of course, it's up to the recursive tracing, which we can do a little bit later. Okay? And then once I got this number here, this number here, plus one, I'm gonna get the size of the entire tree. Guys, right, so are we okay about the first one? Right? Get some idea, get some intuition. That's really what you need to understand things uh, that, come, that will come later. All right, let's do another one very quickly. Let's say I want to search for some item, and I just want to return either true or false. If the item is in the tree, for example, I'm looking for X. Is X in the tree? Not really, so you gotta return false. Is F in the tree? Yes, so you should return true, all right? So for this one here, again, you're going to think about recursively, right? I'm just gonna write it down the pattern and you can think about it. Okay, start, star, right here. 
Let's say, uh, let me say search. Again, you want to think about what's really the base case and what's really the recursive case, right? This one turns out to be the same because if I say I want to search directly through this big tree, that's too much for me. I cannot do it right away. But if I know that I'm now in a subtree where the node itself is actually external, then I can just compare whatever content it is, for example, H over here, with what I want to search for. Okay, so this is what we can do. So let's say if I want to search for, let's say some target. So target over here could be, for example, X, in which case doesn't exist. Well, it could be maybe F, in which case it does exist, right? Can be different target. And then if I got some external node, N, all right? And this one here is gonna be some base case calculation. And you know the equals method in Java, right? So I can simply say n dot whatever content it is, I'll just say dot equals. And then the targets, I'll just say t for now, okay? That's the base case. If I'm boiling down into the base case, is this matching the targets? If it is not, then this subtree is not gonna give me the right answer. Is this the answer? If no, then I'm gonna look at other subtree recursively. All right, and the next, Step would be, what if I want to search for the same target, but now I have some internal nodes? Now, anyone would like to think about and try, how should the pattern be making the recursive call? Hence, you may want to look at this part over here. The only difference is this part here is returning an integer. But here we are returning an, a Boolean. That's the only difference, right? But the recursive pattern will still be the same. You somehow want to do some recursion on the two subtree. All right. Anybody would like to try? I know it's very new to you, but you may want to think this hard right now because things will get more complicated. Ferris, go ahead. Yeah, maybe the root itself, for example, right? So let's say, let me help you a little bit. Let's say I want to search, let's say for A, whether the subtree rooted at A contains the target. You're saying that first of all, we contain to see whether A itself already matches the target. Yeah, if the left subtree contains that, or if the right subtree contains that, right? Okay, that's the idea, exactly. And how do we write it down? So for this one here, I'm just going to put in a, at the top, since I'm running out of space. Okay, I'm gonna put it here. Okay, that's a recursive case. You're gonna say, first of all, the n itself dot equals, and then the targets. And also you're gonna say n dot left, should be called on the search. Okay, targets and and the uh, left. Also over here, search the same targets, but and the uh, right. You can see this is a boolean. This is a boolean. This is also a boolean. We cannot return three booleans. What should we return? How do we combine them? Conjunction or disjunction? Disjunction, right? Okay, good. All right, sorry about separating this apart, but you see the idea. Right, so these are the absolute basics for binary tree. All right, hopefully you're getting it. All right, any questions? We good? Okay. And what we should do is, let's see, what time is it? Okay, 20 minutes only. So I think we can do a little bit more before we move on to uh, some short break. All right, let's do this one here. So now, starting from now, we're gonna get a little bit more mathematical, right? Stay on track. The first one, let's do some review. 
do you know what a geometrical sequence is? You guys know? For example, a very typical one, if I say 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus maybe all the way to 1024, right? This is a geometrical sequence. How do I tell? You definitely get larger, but how, how does it become larger? Uh, it becomes, so like four, eight is the twice of four. Yes, so there's a common factor over here. From here to here, multiply by two. From here to here, also multiply by two, right? It's true for everybody, right? It's called geometrical sequence. And when we were back on the uh, asymptotic analysis, when we try to count number of prim primitive operations, we talk about arithmetic sequence, right? You, you don't want to abandon that. You might need that later in the exam. But now, for binary tree, when we count the nodes, you definitely need this sequence over here. And there is a formula for that. I'm pretty sure you have seen that before, but in case you forgot, like me, I don't really memorize the formula. Whenever I need to recall the formula, I just try to do some very quick derivation on the paper. We take about one minute. Let's see how we can do that. All right, I'm gonna do it together with you. Okay, but if you don't mind, I'm just going to follow my notes on, so I'm consistent with the color, okay? Let's say in general, you have some initial item. You can think about this guy here is the initial item I. There's some common factor, so this is like a common factor, common factor. And also the number of turns, this is the tricky one to really make sure you can count. Do you guys see how many turns there are in this sequence over here, how many? Do you know what 10, uh, 1024 is two to the power of? Nobody knows? All right, in case you don't know, you should know that guys, okay? I'm telling you now, but you should know. All right, so now, given that this is two to the power of 10, how many turns are there in this sequence? 10? 11, because, be careful, this is two to the power zero, right? From zero to 10, all right? So two things, guys, if you, just in case you don't know, you have to make sure you know. Number one, know about the common uh, exponents for two, right? I would say at least know until maybe 2048, at least, until that. And then, whenever you want to count the number of turns, make sure you also account for if that's two to the power zero, all right? Right, let's now derive the formula. Let's say we have a geometrical sequence over here. Let's say a series, okay? Let's say k turns. So we have the initial turn plus the initial turn times r plus the second turn times r, which would be i times r to the power of two plus i times r to the power of three plus all the way to if I say I got k turns, then what should be the last turn? K or something else? K plus one? Are you sure? K minus one, right? Guys, again, you gotta be very careful. Math, math, we need precision for math. Because think about this turn over here is basically i times r to the power of zero. So you can see, go from zero all the way to k minus one, you got k turns, right? Precision is so important, all right? So that's a series. And we want to know what's the formula to calculate this sum over here, okay? Let's see. The final formula, I can tell you, goes something like this. And this one should not be the first time you see that. Initial turn times r to the power of k minus one, r minus one. This is the final formula. You may choose to memorize it, or you're maybe like me, I don't memorize it. I, whenever I need it, I derive it within a minute. That's what I do. Let's now derive it. How do I derive this formula here? Well, here's a trick. 
let me try to multiply this here by just r. r multiplied by sk, which will be i times r is going to be i times r over here, plus second term times r, i times r to the power of 2. Sec uh, third term times r, plus i times r to the power of 3, right? All the way to, we'll get something over here, plus, and this final term times r is going to be, okay, let me try to move a little bit. Oops. And i times r to the k. All right, let me say that again. You want to multiply every term over here just by r. And by aligning the, aligning the series a little bit, you can see this term times r is going to be this. This term times r is going to be this. This one becomes this, this one becomes that, and etc. This one becomes that. And then, oh sorry, this one here finally becomes this. So the final term, you want to make sure you understand that. That's a bit tricky, all right? Okay. Are we okay with this? Okay, and then we got a huge duplicate over here. The, the way to do it is you have to do some subtraction. Okay, over here you can try to do some subtraction. Okay, so what I will do is I'm going to say R times SK minus sk. I want to subtract this from this, okay? And let's do a little bit of factoring. r, so we got sk as a common factor. That'll be r minus 1, and then times sk. And then it's going to be equal to what? You can see this part here get canceled out. It's going to be I to the power uh, I times R to the power of K minus I. Okay, and then factor out the I. It's going to be I multiplied by R K minus one. So now you can see over here, this one over here is equal to this one over here, and the final step. Sk would just be equal to this divided by that. So you're going to get i times r to the k minus 1 divided by r minus 1. That's exactly the formula. All right? Okay, now I'm going to assume everybody knows about this formula. Either you memorize it, which I don't recommend, or you simply derive it quickly, either way. But in our case, for this course, mostly the tree will be binary. So that means the sequence you're going to get is more or less like this, where the common factor is actually 2. In that way, r minus 1, you're lucky. It's simply 1. No division should be done. Okay? And then, the i, uh, and also the r here will just be 2 to the power of something. So this is really something you did earlier, possibly in your calculus course. But we wouldn't do something too complicated, don't worry. Okay? Are we okay with this? Okay. Let's now do one more derivation about a tree up by applying this formula, and then we'll take a short break. Right? Let's do one more, which should take about 10 minutes. And I want you to maybe take a final look on this formula here. Just make sure you can more or less memorize it just for today. And then let's now talk about how we can apply this formula. Right? I'm going to go directly to here. So here we're going to understand from scratch how do we calculate the number of nodes in a binary tree, starting from level 0, level 1, level 2, all the way to the height of the tree. Okay? Let's see. Let's be very systematic. Okay? Our goal is to calculate the maximum number of nodes in a binary tree with height, h. So h over here, of course, is going to be a natural number, larger than or equal to 0, of course. Right? 
Okay, we want to talk about given h, what's going to be the maximum number of nodes? That's something we'd like to know. And at some point, we'll need that formula we just derived a few minutes ago. Okay, let's take a look. So I'm going to also have some tabular-like structure for you. So let's say we are going to numerate in terms of the level. Okay, level something. Okay. And of course, the way we derive the level is according to the depth of the nodes, right? That's something we talked about last time. And then for each level, we're going to talk about maximum number of nodes in that particular level. At the end, we're going to add up all the nodes in the level. That's why it's, at some point, we need a geometrical sequence sum formula at some point. Okay? Let's do this very carefully. Maximum number of nodes at level something, right? Depending on which level we are talking about. Right, I want to give you a little bit of a look ahead. This page here is the most important page for today because once we understand how you can analyze each level of the binary tree, all the other properties I'm going to talk about are somehow more or less based on this. Okay, so this is the most important page. Okay, let's see. And this will be the binary tree I would like to talk about more or less like this. Okay. And I want to talk about, let's say, level zero. Okay, so you can see the alignment. Okay. Level zero is going to be just the root. Okay, just the root over here. So level here is going to be zero. And how many nodes do we have? Just one. Which happens to be two to the power of zero. By the way, just give you a little bit of reminder, it's a little bit like this, 2 to the power of 0, all right? Let's now go to the second level, uh, I mean level 1. And if I go to the next level, so let me give a little bit more space, let's say over here, okay? Let me use a different color. That means we may have, since we talk about maximum, that means the internal node over here has two child, two child nodes. In that way, we're going to have one here and also one here. By the way, when you draw the binary tree, you don't necessarily have to draw arrow. You can just draw a line. Doesn't matter. Okay? If you draw, draw like that, it's completely okay. okay? Right? How many uh, level one? How many nodes? Two. All right? So far, it's still easy. I'll do a few easy ones so we can generalize it, which is two to the power of one. All right, one more, and then we can generalize it. Let's say we have another level over here, and to really be the maximum, that means we got one, two over here, and one, two over here. So we got one node here, one node here, one node here, and one node over here. Right, so that's level two. And then that'll be basically four, which is two to the power of two. If you're okay so far, that's a good sign. But we need to generalize it all the way down to the bottom level. That's what we should do, okay? Let's see what's gonna happen. And let me just uh, give you another visual hints. You can think about starting from the root all the way down to the bottom. We are measuring the height of the tree, which is h. That means if you want to be completely uh, complete, you have to go all the way from 0 all the way down to h. All right? All right, so let's now talk about the bottom level. This will be the critical part. The bottom level here. And before that, you, think, you should think about it's dot, 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 meaning that a similar pattern of derivation is going to happen, right? Now, at the bottom level here, we actually got the nodes basically all the way in this way, right? All the nodes. First of all, what's the level? Level should be just h. And remember what's really h by definition. 
maximum depth of the child nodes. And apparently, if the H, uh, if the height is H, that means every node at this le bottom level over here has exactly depth H. All right. Okay. How many do we have maximum? Now, it cannot be a concrete number anymore, like a 4, 8, or etc., or even 10, 24. You don't know, depending on what H is. What should this number be? Please. To the power H, that's a very good, okay? And for those of you who are not too sure how this is derived, take a look at the exponent. Level zero, you got zero. Level one, you got one. Level two, you got two. Level H, of course you got H. So far we talk about at different level, what's the maximum number of nodes that could be at that particular level, all right? And now, what will be the maximum number of nodes in the tree? You have to add them up together. All right? So this will come back to this original question over here. Let's write it down. It's going to be 2 to the power of 0, which is over here, plus 2 to the power of 1, which is over here, plus 2 to the power of 2, all the way to 2 to the power of h. All right, so now you have a choice. Either you already memorized the formula about geometrical sequence sum, or derive it right away on the paper. Let's say this is the exam, okay? Let's say you do recall the formula. In that case, it's going to be initial term, which is two to the power of zero, multiplied by the common factor to the power of the number of turns. Common factor is two. And how many turns do we have? From zero all the way to h. h plus one, all right? h plus one. And then the rest, okay, minus one is always there. And then you're going to get the r, which is two, minus one. Okay, let's simplify that. You can see this guy over here is one. This guy here is also one. So what you will get finally would be 2 to the power of h plus 1 minus 1. All right? That's how you derive it. Maximum number of nodes in a binary tree. Maximum. Which means the tree is completely full. I have one exercise for you. And think about it. Maximum number of nodes from level zero to level h minus one. It should be a simple exercise for you to do. Figure out the geometrical sequence sum and then apply the formula. All right, that should be an easy one to do. Okay, exercise for you. All right, guys, any question for now? If you completely follow through this math over here and are comfortable with the detail, it's a very good sign, all right? Okay, I would suggest take a short break and take attendance, and then we'll continue. And we got a number of properties I would like to go over, okay? So let's now take attendance, and then we'll take a short break. All right, get your device ready, and then we'll take attendance, okay? Yeah, check in, please. Yeah, in case you don't know, we are taking attendance now, and then make sure you check in. If you got any issue, I got a sign-up sheet here, as usual. Everybody's okay? Okay, I'm gonna close it. Thank you. Take a two minutes break and then we'll come back. For those of you who just want to think more, I'm gonna leave the page over here. 
right? But you should really take a break. Oh, did you check in? You okay? I'm just saying I'm over there. Mm, funny. Okay. Yep. As usual, if you can. Uh, Thank you. Didn't it work for you either. None of my classes are showing. That's too bad. How many classes do you have? Eye clicker. Uh, just this one in my face. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just uh, sign in. It's sorted by last name. You know. Yeah, can you also do me a favor by, okay, just, yeah, can you also put, just put, uh, is it March 15 today? Yeah, can you put March 15 over here? Yeah, that'll be enough. Yeah, put it here on top. Yeah, put March 15, please. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Yes. The yeah, external so nodes, yeah. Mm -hmm. nodes, how do you note then, like, like, when you say that's an incorrect path, how do you know to swap between the two, um, uh, the two branches? To swap between? Like, if we were to, uh, uh -huh. like, uh, if we were going to the depth level two. Mm -hmm. Let's say, yeah. Uh -huh. And we, we finished on the most left external node. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we came back and we're trying to check the right one. How do we know to swap between them? Um, you know what? You know, I think uh, typically for recursion, yeah, come over here. Yeah, typically, uh, if you want to solve classic recursively, that's overthinking. Okay, all you want to think about is, let's say I'm maybe in some arbitrary node in the tree. Let's say, for example, over here. From there, it may have some left subtree, and from there, it may have some right subtree. Think about what I should do recursively on each subtree. Once you have defined that. At the runtime, recursion is going to do its trick by considering all the nodes. Okay. Yeah, I would say that's okay. It might still be a little bit confusing. I would say grasp the what we've got today, and then uh, do the assignments. Struggle a little bit. I'll talk about it maybe on Wednesday. Yeah. And yeah. Because I get the idea of like oh, you calculate and just like you yeah, would, yeah. Is that you would figuratively get the get the mm -hmm. values, but yeah. like actually I know. getting it to you know, check it. I know it's still very new to everybody. So that's okay. Just okay. it takes some time. Okay. okay. Thank you. Good. All right, guys, let's take one more minute and then we'll get started again, okay? We'll see how much we can do today. Okay, we'll start in just one moment. All right, let's resume, please. All right, if you go back to the slides, I think uh, we spoke about depth and also levels, geometrical sequence, right? Exactly what I just did. Uh, if you, uh, you can watch a recording to see how I derived the formula again, okay? And then uh, about the maximum number of nodes at the levels, right? That's also what we said before the break. All right, from now on until the end of today, we're going to see uh, some more terminology about what kind of binary tree you can have. And more importantly, how we can bound the number of nodes in the tree, minimum versus maximum. You'll get some feel once we have done the first few, okay? Let's uh, start with something called complete binary trees complete, okay? Let me give you some very quick visual summary about complete versus full binary tree, and then you will feel more comfortable when you see the mathematical property, okay? So you have to know about complete binary tree versus full binary tree, okay? Let's say we have two binary trees over here, the structure. And also we got something like this, right? Let's say both of them have the same heights, right? It's about the heights. Complete binary tree, okay, so let's talk about full binary tree. That's easier to see. Full binary tree, well, according to its name, is full. 
Meaning that for every level over here, you got the maximum number of nodes, including also the bottom level, which we know we got 2 to the power of h. Okay? For the complete binary tree, we relax this constraint a little bit. At the bottom level over here, okay, you can have just one node. Or you can have all the way to the, the, all, all the way to the rightmost end to have all the nodes. But here, the number of nodes can be between 1, 2, 2 to the power of h. But the way you fill up the nodes over here should be from left to right. You cannot say you got one node over here, you suddenly got one node over here. It's not allowed. All right, so that's a very quick summary about the difference between these kind of two binary trees. All right, okay? Just about an intuition. And what we need to do now is to say, well, given this binary tree that's complete, what would be the minimum number, number of nodes we can see from there? And what's the maximum number of nodes? Let's do that first. And then for full binary tree, what will be the minimum? What will be the maximum? Right? So by figuring out the minimum and maximum, you can also reinforce your understanding about the structure. Okay? That's what we'll do. Okay? Keep this in mind. I think uh, it's going to help you for sure. Okay, let's start with complete binary tree, which is over here. Okay? And the definition is very formal. I'll help you understand that a little bit. Okay? First of all, it says that nodes with depth less than or equal to h minus 2. I'll visualize it. Don't worry. I'll just go over definition first. All the nodes from level 0 all the way to h minus 2, they have exactly two children to the maximum level, to the maximum degree. And for the nodes at a depth h minus 1 level, they may have 0, 1, or 2. And then, at the, so this phrasing over here, be careful. Sometimes I also got confused my, with my wording. Maybe I should change that at some point. But we say the children of the nodes with depth uh, h minus 1. That means all the nodes at level h, the bottom level. That's what it really means, because we have the children of. Okay? At the bottom level, the nodes should be filled out from left to right, which is also what I said. So these are the three bullet points that tell you what does it really mean for a binary tree to be complete? All right. This is definition you want to maybe isolate yourself, maybe after the class, to really get yourself convinced how to interpret that. But let's see some example over here. Okay. And for now, just focus on this part over here. Right. For this part here, don't worry just yet. Okay. Just this part. And let's see this example over here. This particular tree has height 3. Because if you see the maximum depth, is going to be, so you can see, for example, 1, 2, and also 3. Right? So height is equal to 3. That one makes sense. And let's now try to do a little bit of annotation to help you. So we can say over here, this will be level 0. So d equals 0. And d equals 1, d equals 2 and also d equals 3. Okay, so far, right? More to that, you can see here 3 is matching the heights, which makes sense because height is the maximum depth of the nodes, right? So think about this guy over here is really just h. This guy here is h minus 1. And the rest over here is simply all the, all the nodes, all the levels less than or equal to h minus 2. Right? That's the simplest example I can try to visualize the constraint. So why am I doing this? h, h minus 1, h minus 2 correspond to, on the slides, h minus 2, h minus 1, and h. Right? So when you look at the definition again after the class, you should look at that picture as well to help you understand. Question? So, which one? Sorry. Uh, you're, you're jumping ahead, but the answer is no. It wouldn't be a complete binary tree. So the question was, let's say if I, let's say if I remove this, it wouldn't be. Because according to the definition, 
uh, for all the levels up to h minus two, they must have exactly two children. But for this node, it only has one, so it violates the property. Okay. But it's a good question anyway. Okay, so let's now talk about exactly minimum number of nodes. Okay, basically for minimum and maximum, you know that for this particular subtree, well, for this particular part, I should say subtree. Okay, for this part here, that's orange. That means starting from level zero all the way down to level h minus two, we're completely full. Okay. So for this part here, how do we calculate? You can think about this, th there will be one node over here. This is when uh, the depth is equal to zero. And also we got also this part over here, the bottom one that's also full. This will be the depth is equal to h minus one. Okay? How many nodes are there just for the orange part? You should do. When d is equal to zero, it's going to be one, which is two to the power of zero. Plus two to the power of one, plus all the way to two to the power of h minus one. Are we okay? Just for the orange part, okay? And for the maximum node, it's gonna share this orange part as well. So let me write it down. Now, for the case of the minimum, we have just one node, just one. Remember I said before, in the visual summary, it's between one and two to the power of h. That's obvious. This should be give you the minimum. This should give you the maximum. So plus one. This one plus two to the power of h, meaning that I got completely filled out at, power, uh, at the level uh, h. All right. And I'm pretty sure you know how to simplify this, okay? I'm just gonna give you the answer just for now. This part over here, once you simplify it, okay, I'm gonna leave the simplification to you. What do you have to do? You have to calculate geometrical sum sequence using the formula and then plus one. That one is going to give you two to the power of h. Okay, simple math, please do it. And then if you got trouble, let me know. And for the maximum over here, if you try to do the math, this one here is going to be two to the power of h plus one minus one, right? It's also on the slides. What you really want to understand is about visually the orange part down to level h minus one should be completely full. You calculate that first, which is a common part that's shared between the minimum and maximum cases. And then plus one for the minimum and plus two to the power of h for maximum, right? And if you look at the slides, that's what you get. Oh, sorry, over here, all right? All right, any question about this one for a uh, complete binary tree? Okay. And now for full binary tree, that should be trivial, given that you understood this. For the full binary tree, we have no tolerance. Every level must be the maximum, right? So you can think about for the minimum and maximum, they will, they will, they will be just the same. It's going to be level zero all the way to level H. So two to the power of zero plus two to the power of one plus all the way to two to the power of H. And if you recall, that's the number, all right? So that would be two to the power of H plus one minus one. Yeah, maybe I should really expand the box so that's a little bit more readable. So that's the final number. Again, it's not so recommended that you simply try to memorize the number. We got, actually got about 10 different numbers in the mathematical property. You don't want to memorize them. Make sure if you really forgot, 
uh, the precise number. You have to make sure you actually uh, derive them on the fly. Right? All right, any question about this? Complete versus full binary tree. Good. And let's now derive more mathematical properties, right? It's going to be a series of, let me count, one, two, three, four, four of them, okay? We should, we should be able to finish all of them. We should be able to. If we have time, we can even do a little bit of mathematical induction on some interesting property. We'll see how much we can do. Okay, the first one. And if you look at the slides, the next one, uh, okay, that full binary tree, also we spoke about, the next four slides is about bounding the number of nodes and bounding the height of tree and all the way to over here. Okay, all the way to slide 34. Let me just move to iPad. So let's talk about each one of them one by one, okay? For each one of them, the most important thing before you ever try to do some math, that mathematical derivation, picture yourself, how should a tree look like in the minimum case, in the maximum case? That's my hints to you, but let's take a look, okay? Let's now look at the property first, and I'll give you some guidance. Let's say you're given a binary tree, and the binary tree here doesn't need to be full or complete. Doesn't need to be any arbitrary binary tree. And the tree is of height h. Given this, what would be the maximum and minimum number, number of nodes? And we are saying that the minimum number of nodes should be h plus 1. The maximum number of nodes should be this number over here. All right. And this is some example. Let's say if h, okay, let's say if h is equal to 3, so that means the minimum number of nodes is going to be 3 plus 1, which is 4. The maximum number of nodes is going to be 2, oh, sorry, yeah, two, 2 to the power of 3 plus 1 minus 1, which is 15. That's what you can use about a mathematical property. But now, how do we visualize it? Let me ask you this to give you some guidance before I just give you the answer directly. If I tell you that this is the height, h, what will be the way to draw the nodes such that you get a minimum number of nodes? And what will be the way to draw the tree such that you get a maximum number of nodes? So by the resulting height is going to be h, no matter what. That's the hints you want to take. How about minimum first? If I tell you that the height is h, how should I draw the tree in such a way that I will use the minimum number of nodes? Mario. Yes, absolutely. It's called, uh, yes, one, one way to draw that would be something called a one-way one slanted tree. Okay, so something like this. I will start with here, and then one edge, one edge, all the way to over here. So you can think about this is edge number one, edge number two, all the way to edge, edge, right? If you got h edges, how many nodes do you have? h plus 1, right? Remember? Right? So h edges, h plus 1 nodes. Okay. okay, that's very good. And in our particular case, for example, if you got h to be 3, so that means you got exactly one edge, two edges, and three edges. You can see here, the h is exactly equal to three. And how many nodes do you have? One, two, three, and four. h plus one. Okay, that's minimum. Okay, now, think about extreme on the other end. Given the same heights, how should I draw the tree such that I can use the maximum number of nodes? What well, Mario said will actually give us a very good insight. The way he said will be, in the minimum case, every node, every internal node has exactly one child. How do I get a maximum? Well, every node has two child, right? Let's draw that. So that means, for example, 
h equal to 3. So here, level 1, I got ex the maximum possible. Level 2, I got a maximum possible. And then I got a maximum possible. Okay. And you can see I got exactly 1, 2, and 3. Right? That's also height 3. That's, uh, you can see this tree over here and this tree over here, they're both of height 3. But they look very different. That's really the value of this mathematical property. Okay? And now, in general, let's say if you have this particular tree over here, that's a maximum case. Basically, got maximum number of nodes at every level. And it's going to be 2 to the power 0 plus 2 to the power 1 plus all the way to 2 to the power h, right? This is level h. And we know this very well. That's exactly the number we de derived earlier, right? It's going to be 2 to the power h plus 1 minus 1. And, of course, in this case, we got 15, right? In this case. Are we okay with the first property, right? This one here, in some way, is more like a very natural observation from the single page we derived before, right? All right, let's now do another one. And one thing you want to be, be very clear about, here we are given the same height, and then figure out accordingly what should be the minimum and maximum number of nodes. Sometimes you might be fixed with the number of nodes, and then you want to figure out the minimum versus the maximum heights, right? These can change. You want to pay attention to it. Okay, second property. Oh, there you go. All right, that's interesting here. Given a binary tree, again, arbitrary binary tree, with n nodes. So now we fix the number of nodes. There's no notion about minimum versus the maximum number of nodes. It's always n. And given n nodes, what will be the minimum versus maximum height? In that way, you cannot really just compare these two trees. You cannot do that because this tree here and this tree here, they've got different numbers of nodes. That's not a way to draw that. Agree? Okay. Now, this is what you want to think before I give you the answer. Here's my hints for you. By using seven nodes only, What's the way to draw the tree to gain the maximum height? Also, by using seven nodes only, what's the way to get the minimum height? Let's do maximum. That might be easier. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, exactly, right? If you understand exactly what the problem is about, you will know. So the Upper bound will just be n minus 1, okay? So think about, let's say, 7 here. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then I got 1, oh. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? You can see the number of notes, 7 notes. So that means 6 edges. Right? That's exactly n minus 1. In general, you want to use n nodes, which tells you it will be n minus 1 edges. Right? That's in general. Pretty much the same diagram, but just two. All righty. What about this guy here? Minimum heights. By using seven nodes, what would be the way to really get the minimum heights? Yeah, exactly, right? That can really make sure you use, you use up every level possible before you get to the next level, right? For this one here, let me just put it down. Well, I used one node already. I used two, uh, two, and then three so far, four, five, and six, seven like a complete binary tree, as, as much as possible. Okay, let's see if this will satisfy the property. The number of nodes over here is actually equal to seven. And the height is equal to one and two. 
And let's look at this formula. I'm going to derive that together with you too, but let's look at that. By the way, implicitly, base 2. Okay? So what we're doing is we have log base 2, number of nodes is 7, plus 1, minus 1. So this guy over here, log 2, 8, 3. Right? 3 minus 1 is going to give you 2. It does match. Of course, sometimes the tree may be such that you don't necessarily have a full binary tree, but that's okay. We are talking about the max, uh, the minimum case. Sometimes maybe it's slightly larger, which is okay. So let's now derive it in general. Let's say, so here this is a full binary tree. A full binary tree goes like this. So, the, uh, so we know that for a full binary tree, we got exactly 2 to the power of h plus 1 minus 1 nodes. How do I know it? Remind you again, back here. Okay, I'm using this number here. Okay. This is a full binary tree. Full binary tree with height h. So this is h. Okay. And the number of nodes in this case is exactly equal to 2 to the power of h plus 1 minus 1. All right, so we want to rewrite it in a way that we can see exactly what h should be. Now h appears at the, uh, at the exponent. We want to bring it down. How do we somehow bring this down? We need to take log. All right, agree? Okay, let's do that. Before that, let's do some preparation. Let me move the minus 1 to the left. That means m plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power of h plus 1, right? And then the next step, I can take log, right? Log base 2, m plus 1, is equal to h plus 1. And finally, we know that h is equal to, move the plus 1, is going to be log base 2, m plus 1, minus 1. Right? It's a very simple derivation, but it does review about some uh, important math. Right? Guys, are we okay about this? Right? Okay. Yeah, we got about 10 minutes, right? 10 or 12 minutes. Okay, and we can definitely finish this. Okay. The third one, okay. If you're following what's going on so far, that's very good. We're almost done with the mathematical part, just a bit more. The next one. And we are now going to cons be concerned about in internal versus external nodes, okay? The next one. Let's say we got a binary tree and the height is fixed to be h. If the height is fixed to be h, what will be the minimum and maximum number of external nodes? And this is the notation we use. We simply say n with subscript e for external. Okay? What's the minimum and what's the maximum? Basically, the minimum or maximum leaves in the tree that has no children. And let's do one example. In the case where we got h to be 3, what will be the minimum? case. Should the minimum more on the slanted tree or should be on the full binary tree in order to get minimum number of external nodes? Slanted, I agree. So it's going to be, let's say this, 1, 2, 3. Right? You can see here the height is equal to 3 and then how many external nodes do we have? Just one. matching this. Constant, always. What about maximum? Maximum should be the other, way, the other end, which means the tree is more like a complete. Right? So let's say you got this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? In that case, you actually got 
One here, two here, three here, and four over here. Number of external nodes is actually four. And not surprising, this is exactly the number of the maximum number of nodes at the bottom level, right? So this is level H. What in this way? Okay, it's actually level three. And the three over here is, of course, the heights. And four here is uh, let me see. Yep, high will be three, and then. I think, uh, yeah, I didn't draw that properly. So this is only up to two, right? Let me draw it again, just to be precise. My apologies, let me do, do it once more. Start with this, level one, and then level two, there we go, level three. That's the one. Okay, and then over here, this will be all the external nodes we have. This will be level one, two, and three. And the three here is corresponding to the heights, which is over here, right? Now it's correct, okay? And now, how many nodes do we have? It should be two to the power of three, right? In general, if you have a full binary tree, right? And then let's say this is a full binary tree. And then you have the heights, H. How many nodes do you have at the bottom level, right? That one should be quite obvious. This will be two to the power of H, right? And again, we're using the result from the, from the single page we derived in the beginning. Okay, we're good. Final one. We talk about external nodes, let's talk about internal nodes, okay? It's pretty much the same, because you can see here, if the external nodes happen to be the minimum, internal nodes also happen to be the minimum, because if you compare this case, internal nodes will be these three. In this case, internal nodes will be this particular tree, which will be much more, right? Okay, if you got an insight, that's very good. And for this one, I'm, I'm not gonna waste your time. Let's see the result quickly. Given the heights being H, we want to bound the minimum and maximum for the internal nodes. And the way we write it is, uh, is going to be something like N and then internal, like that. Okay, let's draw that very quickly. So if I got, let's say H equal to three, one, two, three. So the H is equal to three. How many internal nodes? One, two, and three. Whatever I didn't color before, it now should be colored because external node, external node, they are exactly mutually exclusive, okay? And now I got number of internal nodes would just be equal to three. And three is exactly the heights. So in general, if you have, let's say, one, two, all the way to this. If height is equal to H, let me say it a little bit more carefully. If the number of edges is equal to H, right? You can see H number one, H number two, this will be H, H. In that case, how many internals do you have? Exactly H. All right. Okay, finally, what about a maximum? And for this one here, I'm just gonna use the general pattern directly. If this is your full binary tree, okay, and then, you have the height H. Now, how do we count the number of internal nodes? Basically, one way to think about it, count all the nodes in the tree, and then subtract the bottom level. But that one may be a little bit overkill, okay? You don't need to do that. Why don't we simply count 
all the way down to h minus 1. Why don't we do that? That'll be easier, right? Mathematically, both work, OK? So now, if we look at that, uh, so here, this part, except for the bottom level, OK? Only up to here, right? So this part over here is going to be number of nodes from level 0, which is over here, to level h minus 1. h minus 1. That one is going to be 2 to the power 0 plus 2 to the power 1 plus all the way to 2 to the power of h minus 1. Right? If you do the math, it's going to be this. Okay? They will match. Quite a lot of information today, I know. But I think that they all make sense, right? It's logical and mathematical. Are we okay about this? Okay. I got four minutes. Do you mind if I do one more? Or you would rather take a break? One more? Okay. Silence means yes, one more. All right. Good. Awesome. Okay. This one here, I can tell you that I just want to do it quickly. This one here is uh, a little bit tricky, but I would like to do as much as I can. But if no, I can pick it up next time. Let's read the question together. Okay. And this is just another... Oh. It's something called proper binary tree. Okay, you know what? How about just this slide? I'll do the mathematical induction next Wednesday. Just this slide, and then I'll let you guys go. Okay? So final term for today. We say that there's an, uh, we talk about full binary tree, complete binary tree. There's another th tree called proper binary tree. <laughs> what does that mean? That means every internal node, that means any node that has at least one child, okay? They must have two children, exactly. Okay, so now if, let's take a look. If you look at this particular tree over here, oh, sorry. If you look at this tree here, for all the nodes, either it has exactly two child nodes or it has no child, either zero or two. That's the definition to be proper. And what I would like to do when we come back next Wednesday, I would like to prove this particular mathematical property given that the binary tree is not empty and it's proper, like this, according to the definition. Each node has exactly either zero or two child nodes. In that way, we can argue that the number of external nodes is exactly the number of internal nodes plus one. Okay, I would encourage you guys to really think about how can you prove this property using mathematical induction by considering base cases and also inductive cases. I do have the solution on the slide. You can feel free to take a look, but I would like to do this one together with you as well. That one really tells you later on if you want to argue about tree properties recursively. That's kind of the technique you can actually use. Thank you so much. And then for next Monday, not here, you're going to make sure you go to Willis Center. And then any questions, let me know. You guys take care.